Hey, what's up guys, iOS 12 is here, and in this video, I'd like to do an extensive coverage of all of the changes, from the smallest to the largest, everything you need to know about this update and whether or not you should update on a variety of devices. Now, Apple did release iOS 12 to the general public today. This is the final version, and what you need to know about that is that if you were on the iOS 12 Gold Master Edition, there will be no software update in the over-the-air settings. It is the exact same build number as that, and everyone already on GM has no reason to update. And Apple will be releasing a small number update here very soon, 12.0.1 likely, so keep an eye out for that one. And whether you have an old or new iOS device, iOS 12 brings new life to all of them. So app launch times have been reduced, the camera opens faster, everything in general just feels much faster, very optimized and uh, that extends to all devices. So from the 5S to the iPhone 6S, you'll notice a night and day difference from before and after updating to iOS 12. And stack notifications. Now notifications are so much easier to handle. You don't have all of these just laid out on your lock screen that can easily be hidden. And managing all of them at once. So you can go ahead and deliver them quietly, adjust the settings all from here. And in settings, there's a new section for screen time where you can go ahead and manage how long you've been using your device, as you can see, all of these options here. You can also limit the use of certain applications, and much better parental support for blocking certain apps and setting time limits. And Do Not Disturb has a new bedtime mode, so you can actually set certain times that you would like to not be disturbed, and there are apps that can pass through it, of course. You also do get this very nice new screen when you wake up from that mode. And for Do Not Disturb, you can actually set certain times for an hour until the evening or morning and from the current location you're at. There's a reworked Photos app with new algorithms for detecting the subject in the photos, so it's easier to search by that. And then there's a new For You tab with memories and more laid out here. And the Share Sheet has all new icons down here, so they've all been made much more friendlier and slowly piece by piece updated. And there's a new markup interface, so going into here, when actually selecting the tool, you can actually see the opacity right there and change that accordingly. And there's a new color picker with 120 color combinations. And as far as wallpapers go, Apple did add one new wallpaper to iOS 12, but did remove the old iOS 10 one. And iBooks in iOS 12 has been renamed to Books and received a new interface. The news app has also been tweaked, so it's made simpler now. There is no longer a For You tab, and it's much easier to find new sources using this new interface. And the Voice Memos app has been redesigned with an entirely new interface. It's much more functional now, and straight to the point. Both the camera and the notes application have new 3D touch toggles and options here. There's a new scan QR code one on the camera and going into the notes one, here are those. And on the home screen, as you can see, there's a new default orientation for all of the icons with FaceTime up in the top left now. And actual FaceTime has support for up to 32 people group FaceTime. Unfortunately, that support has not been added yet. It was never implemented in the beta and will actually be added later on in a future update in iOS 12. Also with iOS 12, you can actually use an emojis while talking. There's a new effects page where you can put filters and all these cool things during a FaceTime call. And Siri shortcuts. It makes Siri so much smarter just by adding a catchphrase to do a certain thing such as hey, and when I say hey, it sends a text to everything Apple Pro. And in general, Siri has been made much smarter. Siri, how much caffeine in a Red Bull? More access to more data. And check this out on the iPad. Siri, find my iPhone. How cool is that? So Siri from another iOS device can actually ping this one and find it if you lost it in the near vicinity. You can actually use student IDs in the wallet application. It's officially supported and supported by several campuses at the time. Now you can have low power mode enabled and at the same time have Hey Siri enabled as well, the functionality for it. And an emojis and memojis. So Apple has added new functionality with a custom emoji character, which you can go ahead and uh, customize to your heart's content. There are so many presets here from all sorts of features. And now there's even more an emojis. There's a nice clean new interface for it as well. And uh, these four down here are new. And there's now wink and tongue support. So it'll know when you're winking and when you have your tongue sticking up. And built directly into messages is the new camera effects page. So click on the camera, click on the effects button, and now you can get an emojis directly in here, as well as a bunch of things in here. So we'll put a filter on immediately, uh, put some text or shapes into here. It's quite diverse. And now all devices, even without 3D touch, do support the trackpad feature. Just hold space, 
and then go ahead and move the cursor around, much easier navigation. And now tapbacks are supported in the quick reply menu. So just double tap on a text and you have the same interface that you would have in the messages app. And a couple of optimizations in the messages app. So on your contact up here, click on the name to quickly have a shortcut to FaceTime or call them. And also the interface down here for the photos has been made different. So you have to click on the photos app, then go up here to go into recent photos. It's not as easy as before, so they kind of split up some of the functions. And now there's a built-in thesaurus in iOS, so you can look up all the synonyms to a certain word. And the new measure app can actually be kind of fun and very handy in day-to-day -day activities. So it's a little off here for my iPhone XS Max. That should be a six and a half inches, but fairly close. And the stocks application has received a complete redesign. Very, very beautiful. And for individual stocks, you can go back from five years now to all time. And in settings, the battery settings now have a new section for advanced tracking. So you can see so much detail here on which application and what's doing what. There's even a separate category here for when you have no cell phone service, it'll show you that and how much of a drain it is as well. And in the cellular data settings, all of the applications are organized by the amount of data they take up instead of alphabetic. And the new maps application is actually quite great. So much more detailed thanks to an in-house maps solution now instead of relying on TomTom. So Apple's rebuilding the entire maps application and it it really shows. For now, only California is supported, but hopefully the rest of the world will soon follow. And by the way, every single time you call 911, your exact location data will be shared with them immediately. And I believe you can disable that functionality if you don't want it, but it could potentially save lives. And on the iPhone 10, no more accidental screenshots. So clicking volume up and the power button with the screen off will no longer activate a screenshot. You have to turn the screen on and then go ahead and take it. And on the iPhone 10, you can easily delete apps now with a single swipe up instead of having to hold it and then swiping it up. And in the music application, you can actually search for songs just by searching lyrics now. And it's so nice because sometimes you remember a little excerpt and you just wanna search by that. And searching for There Goes Gravity does bring up Lose Yourself, cool. And a super cool function Apple added to music is now when you go ahead and click here, it'll ask you to go to the artist or the album belonging to that song. And now in the control center, there's a new toggle for scan QR code, which is kind of redundant because it's already available in the camera app, but works very nicely. And oh boy, the iPad receives the craziest upgrade of them all. It's now been made more like an iPhone 10, so you don't even need to use the home button whatsoever except to wake the device. So you now swipe up to get into the app switcher. You can easily dismiss apps just like that. And the control center has now been separated from the app switcher, so it's available on the top right, just like on the iPhone 10. The actual status bar has been separated, and this is because of the upgrade to the iPad design. You can quickly swipe between apps now. It is so much more intuitive. And portrait mode has received some upgrades as well. It's now more accurate with more edge detection as it actually uses a separate mask to detect faces and objects. And password support has been improved greatly in iOS 12. You can now airdrop passcodes to other devices. And Safari now suggests passcodes and usernames for new accounts. And face ID has been greatly improved in iOS 12. You can now set up an alternate appearance. So if you look different at other times, you can go ahead and get your iPhone familiar with that appearance. Also from the lock screen, if you fail to scan your face once, you can now swipe up again to rescan instead of having to wait for iOS to do it. And augmented reality in iOS 12 has been greatly improved. There is a new file format, USDZ. that's gonna be used as a universal AR format for Apple. And overall detection for new surfaces in a variety of models has been improved. And in the control center, there's a new mode here for live listen. Use your AirPods to greatly enhance sound and hear things from much further away. And if you have an Apple Watch in the messages application, there will be new activity stickers here. So a variety of them to choose from. And in Safari, there's a new feature to enable favicons in the tab view. So you can see the little icons for individual websites. And podcasts now support chapters. So you can actually see where an individual part starts during the podcast. And in iOS 12, Apple enabled a new security feature where if you're connected to a computer, you have to be unlocked in order to use any sort of data transfer or sync services. And there are now automatic software updates available in iOS 12. And you can now set automatic updates to have happen overnight in iOS 12. Oh, and CarPlay now allows for Google Maps and Waze to be used. All right, guys, so there's my recap of the iOS 12 features that matter. There are a ton of smaller ones that I wasn't able to cover. There's just way too many, but this is most of the bigger stuff that you'll actually notice. Now, as for whether or not you should update, I think hands down, yes, you should. Despite which device you have, it improves everything from speed. It gives you some storage back even. It just makes your experience so much better, especially on the 5S, iPhone 6, and 6S. I think those devices stand to benefit the most.
most from iOS 12. Battery life is very good as well. I actually got some improved battery life on my iPhone 10. Apple certainly optimized that. So after 12 betas, this is certainly one of the most perfected iOS versions ever, and I highly recommend you update. All right, and there it is, guys, iOS 12. Again, without any hesitation, you should be updating your device right now. It's gonna make your life so much better, easier. The quality updates are very, very nice. I mean, my favorite has to be the group notifications and so many small little changes here and there. So stay tuned for any and all future iOS 12 updates. I certainly will keep you updated and enjoy this new iOS 12 update. Peace.